and welcome to the December 14th, 2020 meeting of the Wilmington Board of Selectmen. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. Members of the public who wish to watch and listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner. WCTV, Channel 9, Comcast, Xfinity, Channel 37, Verizon, Fios, and live stream at WCTV.org. This meeting of the Wilmington Board of Selectmen is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1-646-558-8656 and enter meeting ID 830-9659-92, I'm sorry, 7291. Then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the meeting designated for public comment by following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on the telephone keypad. This will notify the meeting host that the caller wishes to speak. All callers using this feature will be placed in queue in the order they enter the prompt. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. All votes will be roll call in alphabetical order. I wanna thank John O'Neill from the town's IT department as well as our friends at WCTV who will be recording this meeting for uh, further viewing. And I do want to wish our viewers a happy fifth night of Hanukkah. Roll call, Selectman Bendel. Present. Selectman Kyra. Present. Selectman De Palma. Present. Selectman O'Mahony. Here. And I am present as well. The board did just, uh, re is reconvening from executive session for the purpose of discussing the purchase exchange lease or other acquisition of real property at 64 Wildwood Street in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town as so determined by the chairman. And further to consider the executive session minutes from October 26, 2020, November 9, 2020, November, 20, uh, November 23, 2020, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 22. I will note that those three sets of minutes were not uh, ruled on as we uh, did end up running out of time. And I would ask that those who are able to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag the United, United States, States, of States of America, and to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. We do have transmitting of the Treasury Warrants, numbers 22, 22A, 22B, 23, 23A, 24, and 24A. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Ms. O'Mahony, seconded by Mr. De Palma. All those in, uh, I'm sorry, we'll do this roll call. Selectman Bendel. Yes. Selectman Kyra. Uh, uh, I'm a yes, but uh, do we have a picture of a, a, of a woman and a dog there? Okay. I think that was a minimized screen. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Enjoy. It was a door. <laughs> I was wondering what happened. I thought I screwed something up. I thought I screwed something up too. I so thought I did. did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone. It was me. <laughs> Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. Mahoney. Yes. And I am a yes. We have two sets of minutes tonight. We have the October 26, 2020. Do I have a motion? Make a so, motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Kyra, seconded by Mr. Bendel. Discussion. See none. All those are. I got to get out of this. Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Kyra. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony. Yes. I am a yes as well. Unanimous. Next set of minutes is November 23rd, 2020. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Kyra, seconded by Mr. Bendel. Uh, discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Kyra. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony? Yes. And I am a yes as well. It is unanimous. All right, we move on to our first appointment, which is with our health director, Shelly Newhouse, and uh, William Cavanaugh, our fire chief, for an update on COVID-19. So I want to thank both of you for uh, being here. 
Hi, everybody. Hi, Ms. Nose. How are you? Sure. I'm okay. Busy. Um, if you saw today, I posted that we had 198 active cases and we have six, over 600 in quarantine, but we're up to 200 <clears throat> cases now because I just got two more in a little while ago. Um, it is really, really busy. I'm seeing, I think the effects of Thanksgiving is, is what we're seeing now. Transmission is within households. So we're seeing, you know, one person picks it up somewhere and brings it back and it's just going rampant through a whole household. And then the contacts just go from there. Um, contact tracing has been proven to be very, very challenging in the town and in the schools. Um, it's, that's what consumes most of the work. Um, it's just, you know, we had 25 to do today and people are wondering why we are not calling them and like, we're getting to you, we'll get to you. Uh, it just takes a long time because there's a lot of questions. Um, I'm hoping that it will quiet down around Christmas. I'm hopeful, but we'll see what happens. I'm not, I'm not sure. There's just, we're at, um, Wilmington is at a 7.6 positivity rate, which is the highest positivity rate of any of the surrounding towns around us. Um, so that means, you know, we're, we're up there in the ratio of testing and positives. So higher than Dorica, Tuxbury, even Woburn, or we're higher than all of them. Uh, and I'm just finding it, like I said, transmission is in households. Um, and it's just putting mm -hmm. um, a big strain on, on us, but we're managing, we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Some of the next big things that we, that you've probably heard in the past week is about the COVID vaccine. Uh, so, that's coming. We're gonna we first seeing it today in hospitals um, and those clinical and non-clinical healthcare workers. This is a good slide right here that I've been posting on social media that sort of explains if someone's wondering when they can get a COVID vaccine. So for the general public, uh, you're probably looking at late late spring or which is will be in phase three. So, and, and that all could change. We'll just keep an eye on it. Um, if you see, um, also another big thing is the governor has rolled back the whole state to phase three, step one, which is the white column. Um, so normally we would be headed that way because of the metrics, us being Wilmington being in the red, but really this, the governor did it for us. He is basically ruled out the whole state to phase three, step one. So you'll see that that's what it affects. Um, everyone's been really great. I haven't heard, it's only been a day because it just started yesterday, but I haven't really heard that nobody's complying. So we'll just take that, um, how it comes if people complain and we can go over everyone, but I'm pretty sure that everyone's heard the news and they can, they'll abide by what's going on. So I'm not sure if, does anyone have any questions? Shelly, how is the, uh, how's the department doing? The health department? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I, I was just asking, how is your department managing with this, um, Really um, it's been stressful the past since Thanksgiving. It's been a lot. Um, where we've we have a couple additional nurses that we hired to help us do contact tracing because it's you know a lot of people will just a lot of our contacts and our patients were just getting lost out there with the contact tracing collaborative. So we needed to really make sure we get a hold of our people that. We're, we're all of our positives and all of our quarantines. So um, it's just it's just not ending. It's all day long and all night long, all weekend. 
but you know, the COVID doesn't stop. So you just take the cases as they come. Uh, well, I, I'm going to open it up to the board, but certainly appreciate you and your staff and <clears throat> all the long hours and all the, the, uh, the hard work that you're putting in. Any other members have any questions or comments from this new house? Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, new house and both chiefs for being here. Uh, you kind of beat me to my question there what about was the, about the additional staffing and just wanted to make sure we gave a plug to residents who may get a call from somebody who's not you, Shelly, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're calling on behalf of you and I'm sure they're indicating that when they call, but certainly, um, you know, if, they, if you do get that call and it's not Shelly herself that we have added some staff to try to deal with the volume of calls. So just wanted to make sure that that was clear for residents. So I appreciate them. And, and I hope my question for you, I hope that's working out for you. I hope that the, helping you get the volume. Yeah, it's, it's um, on Mondays, the state does the training for the online reporting system. So my other two nurses that we have come on um, are taking that training today. And, you know, these nurses are, these are just part-time helpers because they have a regular job. So they have their job and then they're just helping us out, you know, part, on a part-time basis, doing a couple cases a day. And I should- Because even one full-time person couldn't, wouldn't be able to keep up. Thank you again. Chief Kavanaugh. How's the fire department handling this? Good evening. So we're doing well. Um, I know Chief Desmond is on here, but I'm happy to report that we are back to full strength across the board through uh, fire police and dispatch. Uh, everyone is back. Everyone is healthy. So it's a plus. Uh, we have been able to obtain some more PPE. Uh, just luck of the draw was up at our our supplier last week and was able to grab uh, shipments as they were coming off the truck of N95 masks. So that's uh, helpful as well. We have a pretty healthy stockpile right now of uh, Tyvek suits, gloves, eye protection, surgical masks, things of that, of that nature. Uh, the CARES Act, uh, as Mr. Hall tells you guys, every uh, I think every opportunity he gets is ending at, uh, in about two weeks. So what that does, it, it shuts down any reimbursements we're going to get through uh, through the schools, through the food service, and uh, the additional 25% that FEMA doesn't cover. I know the schools have something going on right now where they've been using that grant money, and the uh, the food service actually, uh, Rebecca Sanderson told me last week, the food service has their own grant coming out now as well, which is good. It's very helpful. Uh, however, we're not going to see the uh, the offset, the 25% offset that FEMA doesn't pick up uh, from January 1st on. So hoping that uh, the, the push this time around isn't nearly as bad as it was in the spring. Uh, Shelly does a great job keeping us up with the list of positives, just addresses, uh, so that we know we can be safe and, and hopefully not bring that back into the station. Uh, as of... Um, Current date, we have uh, received about 672,000 in reimbursement from CARES. We also got a, um, a $16,000 payment at the very beginning that it had to do with our ambulance service with, uh, with transporting COVID patients. So uh, that, that's what we've received so far. There's far more than that number that's uh, put into the FEMA system. However, unlike CARES, FEMA is gonna take quite a bit of time to get processed through. They don't have an end date for the project yet. So we, to put it in perspective, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Hall, if I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we had a storm in 2018, spring of 2018, and we got reimbursed for it, I believe at the very beginning of this fiscal year. So yes. it, it takes a considerable amount of time to get a FEMA reimbursement where the upside of the care grant is we have been getting it. So every, so if we put in the project, Rebecca Sanderson puts in the project, it's about, Six weeks we're getting uh, Brian Perry is receiving things. So besides that, we're doing well. We're staying healthy, uh, and we are, you know, taking all the necessary precautions uh, to make sure that we keep our people healthy. Uh, Shelly has been keeping us in the loop again on the COVID vaccine. So when that comes out, that'll be offered to all the first responders in the building and try to get our people taken care of that way. 
anything Chief Kavanaugh. Can I just to... say something? Go ahead, um, Mr. Morris. I, I wanted to let everybody know that food insecurity is really, it's, it's an issue in Wilmington and you'd be surprised, you wouldn't think that it is, but um, you know, with whole households being quarantined quickly, sometimes they're at a loss as to how they're gonna get food and meals. So um, we've had some great help from the food service department at the schools and from the elderly services delivering some meals. But if anyone's out there that wants to be an anonymous food deliverer person or with meals or anything, just message me, private message me. And, and I would love to see that happen so I can get some food to families that are, you know, they just don't have the means to do it. It's not that they can't afford it or or um they just can't get it they don't you know if they're quarantined they're how are they going to get to the grocery store and how are they going to get meals and it's the holidays and and people are worried about how they're going to shop and get christmas presents um it's been you know that's an issue for some of these families uh through you mr hall if you could ask our it department to make a social media push uh tomorrow so that mr house can get some some, uh, I guess, good Samaritans this Christmas season to uh, to help out with the food insecurity and, and uh, help them stay compliant with quarantine. Yeah, and Shelly, we putting on a different hat for a moment, you know, WOW helped out back at the beginning of the summertime with meal delivery and grocery shopping. And <laughs> if I put it out, we could get a lot of volunteers through that too. So I'll just work with you directly on what I what information you want me to put out there. Okay. It, it, if I can also just add um, on that note, uh, I wanted to just thank the community. Uh, during the Santa Parade, it was an incredible amount of food that was collected mm -hmm. along with toys. According to the food pantry, it was the largest single day donation they've ever had. And uh, there's a lot of great people in this community who, who gave a lot that day. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to, uh, again, uh, thank the uh, police and fire for what they've been doing. And I want to especially thank Shelly uh, and her department uh, for the work that, that she's been doing. I, I know uh, uh, firsthand uh, uh, what she's been uh, dealing with. So thank you, Shelly, for all that. The, um, it, the vaccines that are coming out, is that something that you, you, when it comes to Wilmington, is that something that you're going to be giving out? Or is that something that is given out by CVS or Walgreens or, 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 do, or will you be doing that? Uh, we'll be doing that in phase three. So right now, the first shipments will go to um, our three long-term care facilities and CVS is, will be um, administering the vaccinations to them. Um, haven't heard, nor has any health department heard when we're actually getting vaccines to give out to the general public. So as you know, there was those steps like phase one, phase two, phase three. So um, in phase one and two, it'll probably be more like a CVS Walgreens, sort of like a private, almost private vaccinations where you would see like a CVS or a Walgreens or the long-term care facilities get their um, vac vaccines first. And then phase two, um, you know, early education in schools, not really sure. Again, it could, it, I think it's probably gonna work like a flu clinic. Um, this year we had CVS help us out just because of the, the sheer number of flu shots that we were gonna give out and they helped us they gave all the teachers flu shots at the school. So I'm hoping that they can do the same thing for with the COVID vaccine for us. Yeah, well, one of the reasons why I'm asking is uh, uh, an RN reached out to me and said that he would like to volunteer mm -hmm. when the vaccines come in to help you know, with, you know, the, the Board of Health in Wilmington. And yep. how should I... Should I'll need I that. To call so, you, or should I? How do you want me? He can shoot me an email if he wants. Um, 
Okay. I was, we've been already thinking of how we're going to run a, a large scale vaccination clinic clinic. Um, and I'll need a lot of nurses and cause I'd like to do it over, you know, if I did it in one whole day, I, I can't have one set of nurses working all day long. So I'd like to split up a shift. So I'll need quite a few nurses. Okay. So I'll just so, give him your town email yeah. to contact you directly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carrick. Cause you reminded me of a, a question I got from a resident. Just, you know, thinking uh, a few months down the road, but Shelly, you touched upon it that when it will come for phase three, where we're uh, hopefully vaccinating almost everybody. Do we have a safe and secure place where we'll be able to store this? I mean, are we, do we need to start thinking about where we can uh, store this? I mean, I know Jeff's office can be pretty cold in this, uh, with the air conditioner going, but I don't think it's going to be sufficient. Depending on which vaccine we get, um, they uh, if we get the one that needs to be held at minus 70 degrees, it comes packed in dry ice. So, and it'll come in boxes of 900, which will, that dry ice will be able to keep for up to 14 days. But the timeline is, you know, if we got the vaccine on a Monday, we would want to be vaccinating people within a week. So it'll be that quick that we'll have to plan a clinic um, and, and get the vaccine out. So, and we can store it in the nurse's office. I have had a local business in town offer up their freezers for me if I needed to store it there. That, um, so we have that opportunity. So, but we, so we won't need to go out and buy any equipment to store the, vac the vaccines, nor will we have to buy any syringes or um, anything like that. It's all gonna come, all comes together as a package, which is nice. Great, thank you. Mr. Chair. The Palmer. Maybe when uh, you go over social media or Jeff has everyone go over social media, you can put out a, a shout to nurses that uh, would be willing to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Newhouse can start a, uh, a, you know, an entry to uh, have these people already available for her. Mm -hmm. You read my mind. I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Halter, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, just a, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, again, as, as if Shelley doesn't have enough to do, uh, she continues to pursue uh, grant funding. We did uh, receive a, another grant, uh, I believe it was for $5,000 or $5,600. I think this is the third one uh, we received for uh, uh, dealing with the uh, COVID uh, related issues. And then separately, uh, Pam McKenzie received a call from the Lowell Five. Uh, they were looking to make a donation of $5,000 and we've directed that towards uh, COVID. So, um, you know, that's gonna be helpful. All, all said and done though, I, I do anticipate uh, we'll wind up going to the finance committee um, in uh, the coming year to uh, seek funding from the reserve account for uh, money that is in excess of the budget. And even though we're gonna be pursuing money through FEMA, uh, as the chief has indicated, uh, the reimbursement is uh, typically about two years out. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. So Mr. Newhouse, Chief Kavanaugh, I assume Chief Desmond that you'll be staying on for the next appointment, but I do wanna thank you again, uh, both the health department and the fire department, uh, as well as the police department. Uh, for your continued diligence. It's uh, very much appreciated and uh, keep it up. So we'll next move on to our 715 appointment with Samantha Reef, the Health and Recovery Coordinator of the Wilmington Police Department regarding the introduction of Aaron McCauley, a recovery coach. Good evening, Samantha. Good evening, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Good. Why don't you tell Thanks us a little bit that. about the this new position that is uh, being added to the police department, and, uh, the individual that's been hired to, to take the reins. 
Absolutely. Um, Chief Desmond, did you want to say anything first or do you want me to just jump in? Oh, you, you can just jump in. I'll say a few things after. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so um, two years ago, we were thankful enough to get uh, in partnership with PARI and we were on a two year grant for a recovery coach. Um, and this past August, that grant uh, ran out. And so, probably about a year or so ago, we started having conversations um, about how to uh, propel this. Uh, this addition to my team and kind of to enable um, once the grant ended for that to not just be the end of the recovery coach within the department. And so um, thankfully, you know, there's a great group of people here in Wilmington who were super on board with this. And over the last year, we've been able to, um, you know, secure funding and uh, interview and have a, a huge plethora of individuals to apply um, and about a month ago, we hired a recovery coach, Erin uh, McCauley, who's here tonight. Um, and she has she comes to us with a, a really wonderful wealth of background, um, both lived experience and professional education. Um, she's currently getting her associate's degree from North Shore um, Community College in Behavioral Health. She has a number of certifications, um, including a 12-step certification, a peer mentorship uh, certification, Narcan certified. She's um, CPR trained and is a certified recovery coach through um, CCAR. Um, and once kind of COVID runs down a little bit, hopefully will um, the Massachusetts uh, kind of licensing body will reopen and she'll be able to become um, duly licensed there also. Um, she also has a, a great history of and kind of experience running meetings and just working with clients and meeting them where they're at. Um, she herself, um, I'll let her share a little bit about herself, but she um, has five years of reco in recovery. Uh, she lives with her husband and their five kids. Um, she, she knows the system so well, um, whether it's through her lived experience or through just helping clients and already being emerged in uh, working with people um, currently. Um, so I will let Erin introduce herself a little bit more, and then I'll jump back on to kind of um, run through what she will be um, doing and offering to the team. Thank you, Samantha. Um, I'm Erin. I want to say hello to everyone. I'm excited to be working in the town of Wilmington with the Wilmington Police Department and the Fire Department. Samantha, um, I have just about five years clean. Um, August 22nd is my date. Um, so I'm excited to be here. I'm working with Samantha and learning a lot, helping out um, anyone with mental health and substance abuse in the community. Um, in Wilmington and the surrounding cities that touch Wilmington. So Erin has already, she jumped right into it. She um, has been with us for about two or three weeks now um, and has already started reaching out to clients. She um, has met a good number of the officers, building rapport with some of the clients that I've handed off to her. Um, and um, I tasked her with being on a team that will be doing an alcathon for Christmas Eve and Christmas. So that is a round the clock 24 seven uh, meeting for folks who just need some additional support on or before the holidays. Um, so she'll be working on a multi team, multi town team to uh, put that on. It'll start about midday on Christmas Eve and go all the way through to Christmas. Um, she's also going to be resuming the monthly podcast that the formal recovery coach had um, been doing um, she will be co-facilitating a weekly uh, recovery meeting um, in um, collaboration with Tewksbury Police Department. So that'll be every Thursday and is open to the public. Um, she'll be uh, getting involved with the Wilmington Substance Abuse Coalition. And uh, like I said, she'll be continuing to reach out to folks and, and, and meet people where they're at, um, whether it's harm reduction or you know, keeping people safe if they're still actively using, providing tools and resources, um, getting folks into treatment, whatever that might look like for an individual. So I'm really excited to have her join our team. Um, and I, I, I genuinely believe she is um, you know, a wonderful, wonderful person and, and will only help to benefit the, the folks of Wilmington who we serve already. Thank you, Mr. Reef. Chief, did you wanna add anything? Yeah, I just want to thank, you know, the town manager and, you know, yourselves, the board and the, the citizens of the uh, town for voting this position in. You know, it's one thing to have a grant uh, to do a trial run, but when it comes down to, you know, whether the program has value or not, um, it's when the town actually has to uh, pay for the position. And uh, this past uh, 
summer we decided to, you know, when the grant run out to keep this program going. And I think it's a, it's a worthwhile addition to what Samantha does. And uh, we look forward to working with Aaron. Thank you, Chief. Ms. McCall, you, we, uh, this, this board has a high level of respect for the work that Ms. Reef does. So I, I think you're, uh, you're in good hands with her uh, supervision. And certainly we wish there was not as much work for, for you to do, but I'm certainly happy to support this initiative to, to bring you aboard. I did want to open it up to other board members for questions or comments. Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Chief and ladies, thank you for being here. I uh, want to wish you obviously best of luck. Um, but I just want to give a reminder to folks out there who are um, have challenges that we have resources available to you uh, and that you're not alone. The Wilmington Police Department stands ready to help you and Wilmington takes its commitment to helping people who are battling substance abuse so very seriously. And uh, we know, understand that this um, time of year can be difficult for folks. Uh, never mind the pandemic on top of it. So if you're out there and you're listening and you have uh, yourself have some challenges and need some help, please reach out. And if you have a loved one um, who is uh, dealing with some issues, please feel free to reach out. Uh, so thank all of you. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. So Arnie? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. First, welcome, uh, Aaron, to the town. Um, and Chief, I just wanted to commend once again, kind of commend you and Samantha. Um, you know, we're really, I don't think people really understand in Wilmington how proactive we have been um, with this issue. And I'm so proud of what we've been doing because I think, again, kind of given everything that's been going on this year, um, obviously uh, people struggling with addiction issues on top of a pandemic are, are feeling it. Um, so much right now and resources that were available to them, like in-person meetings and in-person therapy and things that we would hope they would stay connected to uh, became more difficult for them. And, and yet here we are again in Wilmington, adding resources to help alleviate that. And that only helps in so many other areas that you as the chief and, and our police force has to deal with. Um, so I'm just so proud that we continue to add resources to help um, really address all of the issues around um, the struggles of the town. We don't, we don't really just, you know, try to hit one issue. We're trying to spearhead it. We're trying to be proactive. And I'm just so proud and grateful that we continue to look for these types of resources. And Erin, I know, you know, your work with Samantha and the chief and the rest of the department is going to just only help to, to continue to keep us safe and, and to keep people safe um, in times like these when, when struggles are even more um, elevated than, than normal. All right, well, welcome aboard, Ms. McCauley. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reeve. Thank you, Chief Desmond, for, for spearheading uh, this initiative. And we're, uh, I guess we wish we didn't have the work to give you, but uh, we're glad to put you to exactly. work. In, uh, Certainly, best of luck. And just, just if I can add, so if uh, anyone out there who's watching or watching this afterwards or knows someone, um, they can contact Aaron or I by either calling the police department or the fire department. They can stop into the station um, and they'll be routed up to us and uh, we would love to talk to them, connect them to resources or whatever they need. Thank you, Ms. Reed. All right, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. And we're now on to our 7.30 appointment with Paula Looney, the town engineer, regarding the conveyance of property at Route 38 Cross Street and Route 38 Corridor Project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, Paula Looney, town engineer. Uh, Mr. Looney. Thank you. I'm here to uh, discuss um, a small parcel of land that's being conveyed to the town um, for $1 to facilitate roadway improvements. Uh, the parcel is located at the north corner of the uh, Cross Street and Main Street intersection. It's highlighted on your screen now. Um, approximately 3,600 square feet of land. It's um, currently owned by the owner of um, the 613 Main Street parcel, which is actually across the street. It's the former Expedex parcel. Um, this parcel of land came along with that deed. 
Um, it, it's kind of behind Charlie's auto body there. Um, when they were in front of the planning board recently for site improvements to the Expedex parcel, uh, this parcel came up and actually they were in front of the board of selectmen too for an earth removal permit back in, I believe June. But during the planning board process and a pre-staff meeting, this parcel came up because it's, it's critical for the geometric realignment of the Cross Street, Main Street and Butters Row intersection. Um, that's part of the Route 38 corridor improvement project. And if I could um, share my screen now with the board, I can show you the, um, the future plans of that intersection. Highlighted. And let me know if, um, if you all can see this screen. Or this uh, plan. We can. Okay, so uh, just to go through the colors here, in red is um, the current alignment of the Main Street, Butters Row, and Cross Street intersection. Um, in blue here is the proposed realignment of the intersection. You can see the safety advantages here. It comes in at a T intersection, which is what you always want to strive for for a, a, an intersection rather than coming in at an askew angle. Um, I also showed here in green, the parcel to be conveyed to the town for, uh, for the dollar. Um, so this Route 38 quarter project just quickly, it's, um, you know, stretches from the Woburn city line to um, north to Route 62. It's um, still on schedule to commence construction in 2023. Um, and I think MassDOT at this point is um, at the 75% design plan um, phase of the project. So with that, um, I believe the acceptance deed for this parcel is was provided in the selectman's packets um, and it's for review under an item to, dis, um, to consider, but I'm happy to answer any questions about um, this deed or parcel that I can answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Any, any members have any questions or comments? So I, I just had a question uh, based on kind of the projected changes. Um, Mr. Looney, is that going to connect to the existing Butters Row Bridge or is there a plans to kind of also address that issue that's been a concern yeah. for quite some time? Yeah, great question. Um, so this realignment solves two problems on that front. The, the first is just coming to a T intersection or cross intersection. Um, and there's a vertical curve in Main Street too that is makes site distance challenging. Um, so, but it also, um, the Butters Row Bridge is scheduled for 2022 to be um, uh, reconstructed to a two lane bridge, as you know. Um, but if you've ever, if, I'm sure you've driven that to that bridge before, the approach to that bridge, it um, has a vertical curve to it to get over the tracks, right? So this, by swinging the road, uh, northerly, uh, Butters Row, I mean, um, to align now with this new intersection, it elongates that stretch. So it makes a much gentler um, approach to that bridge rather than the, I think it's at like six or 7% now uh, grade, which is fairly steep. So uh, short answer is uh, yes, it, it is. Uh, the Butters Row Bridge is contemplated in this design and it happens to be the same design engineer as well. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments from the board? Are there proposals, uh, is there a proposal for lights there? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. That's the uh, warrant for traffic lights. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Thanks. so unless there's any other uh, questions or comments, I, uh, and unless there's any objection, uh, we can move forward to the agenda item number seven, which is the board to consider the accepting the donation of Map 40, parcel, thir parcel 13A, located at the corner of Main Street, Route 38, and Cross Street. I have a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. A motion by Mr. De Palma. Oh, I'm sorry, a motion by Mr. Kyra. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. De Palma. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. Yes. Okay. I thought you froze for a second. Mr. Kyra. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony. 
Yes. Naomi, yes, as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Aloni. Okay, thank you very much. You have a good night. Thank you all. Uh, and just a moment behind, or a minute behind schedule is really the, the reason why probably everyone else at home is watching. Uh, we are joined by uh, Chaz Fiore, who is the reason why most people are currently stuck in traffic. <laughs> Mr. Fiore, welcome. Thank you. Merry Christmas, by the way. Merry Christmas to you as well. <laughs> so at least most of us have, have watched the great Christmas light fight. Um, last Wednesday. And congratulations to you and your family for, uh, spoiler alert, winning the $50,000 prize for having the best uh, Christmas light display. But why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into uh, decorating the, the parents' house for, uh, for Christmas? So I've just, I've always been enjoying the lights and decorating for people to come see. And it's always just, I've always wanted to go bigger and bigger and it just got to this point where it became huge and then the news found out and then the show found out and asked if I'd like to be, be on it. And then I got on and now, uh, here we are. So the, the if I'm correct, the, the actual episode was filmed last year, correct? That is correct. So you've, you've recreated everything and brought the entire village back for this year, right? That is correct. How many lights? Two hundred and fifty-five thousand. Two hundred and fifty-five thousand. Well, running in this for light, thanks you for keeping them in business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what really inspired the this uh, multiple structure uh, environment that you've created? Well, about two years ago I had covered the entire house in lights and I had run out of room to put more, so we decided we needed to create some stuff to add more lights to. And I was inspired by a street in Disney's Hollywood Studios that kind of, they did something similar, a light display. And I tried to recreate something like that. How did you build these things? Uh, they're just, they're basically just facades. They're just a uh, regular two by four wall, just a flat wall. And there's um, these kind of towers, we call them, made out of four by fours, weighted by 55 gallon water barrels that uh, the faces are just bolted right onto those. So I, I should probably assume that you're a graduate of Shawshank Tech then, right? Yes, I am. Of course. Best technical school in the land. Yes. I, I certainly want to thank you for uh, all of the, um, the, the happiness that you've brought a lot of people that have been swinging by. Uh, it's certainly been a difficult year, but uh, thank you for your efforts for putting smiles on uh, Lots of folks' faces. I did want to open it up because I'm sure my colleagues want to have some uh, some questions or comments for you too. Mr. Bendel, I see you jumping out of your chair. <laughs> that would actually be the second time I've done that. First, uh, this week was when the show was on. But <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Chaz. Good to see you. Congratulations. Uh, you know, my wife and I, we watched. We were really excited uh, when you guys went. You know, we were really excited for you, but I wanted to mention that, you know, everybody at the school was really proud of you. Obviously, you and your brother and even your dad are graduates of the school, and it's been kind of nice that everybody's been buzzing about leading up to the show. When it happened, everybody's been talking about it and, and also in town, too. But it's been nice to talk about something positive. We've had so many negative things going on in 2020 that this is a great way to, to finish out the year, and uh, I think we should just, you know, cut 2020 right now after that victory, uh, it, it was really exciting, especially when the Patriots are not having a great season. It was nice to root for something on TV. We were rooting for guys. And uh, our school is really proud of you. I know your shop teachers are all excited, and uh, we're really proud of you, and we want to thank you. Uh, I know the rest of the town are really excited for you. Uh, having been over there myself, it's worth the wait. So sorry about the traffic, but it's all good. So Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for all you've done. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Mr. Kyra. Yes, uh, congratulations, Chaz. That's uh, quite a, a feat. Congratulations to your family as well. I, I watched the, the whole show and I was excited to see Wilmington on national TV. It was, it was just great. It was, uh, it, I'm very proud of, uh, of uh, your accomplishments and, and, and uh, 
your family and, and, and uh, what you bring. But I, on a personal note, I'm probably going to have to come by and see how you string the lights together because I put five of my lights, to, strands of lights together outside my house and I blow the whole thing. So uh, I, I see you're putting uh, 250,000 lights together. So it must be a special technique without me having to go to Shashin Tech to learn how to do it. So I'll probably swing by the house, but uh, thank you. Uh, you represented Wilmington outstanding. Uh, it just, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful display. Um, and hey, I live right down the street. So the, the traffic's okay. I go the other way, but people don't know about so. Thank you and uh, have a great Christmas. You too, thank you. Mr. Palmer. Well, once it was good traffic. Everyone was enjoying themselves. I had a couple of friends that sat in line. They had to. And when they left, they were just amazed. I congratulate you. Uh, hopefully, maybe next year, we put out a challenge and tell everyone in the town, let's get the lights set. Let's light up Wilmington. You know, let's light them up. Uh, the question I have, though, is when did you find out you actually won? So I am contractually obligated to, or allowed to say. I didn't think so. <laughs> I don't actually know if I'm allowed to say. All right, pass. <laughs> Congratulations. I hope you do it again next year. Thank you. So, Mahoney. Yeah, I, I mean, just to echo what everyone else has said, this is especially this year. It's so nice to have something so positive to see, um, to be represented on national television is amazing. So we thank you for representing Wilmington um, so strongly and positively. I know my kids have been, now that they drive, they've been in your driveway a lot <laughs> the last week or two. I've gone by, um, I like the notice, the Facebook notice from the police, you know, reminding people of the traffic there. And again, for a positive and not, you know, because of anything. Uh, not so great. So we really appreciate it. Um, we love that you you have become a landmark for the season uh, in Wilmington, and we hope you keep up the good work. And next year, you know, add on to the village. Let's see. Uh, instead of challenging the whole town of Wilmington, I'd love to see what 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 parts you can add on next. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Hull. Did you want to? Uh, do you have any questions or comments? I know you and I spoke earlier today about uh, just some of the traffic. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, the traffic aside, and uh, I think in, as has been mentioned, uh, given the year we've had, it's nice to be uh, have a bright spot, literally and figuratively, and particularly here in Wilmington. So uh, great job, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be having a lot of apprentices looking, how, looking at techniques on how they can uh, uh, increase their uh, wattage in the future. Yeah. Okay, just jazz. I know a bunch of people have asked, uh, what's the plan going forward? Uh, when are you guys going to shut down this year? A lot of people are wondering how much more time they have. Uh, I I don't know. I guess that depends how how things go, traffic wise and everything. Um, I'd like to usually go to New Year's, but it it depends how it depends how things go. All right, Mr. Chair, if you'll excuse me, I better head over there right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing we don't have licenses on tonight. That's going to keep us uh, going for a couple more hours. But Mr. Fiore, thank you. Congratulations again. Uh, I'm sure if he hasn't reached out to you already, Superintendent Jackson at the Tech is going to be reaching out as uh, a pitch to, to add you to the alumni donor role uh, with that $50,000 winning. So uh, thank you again for, uh, for providing, uh, for painting Wilmington in a positive light and for providing us with a, uh, a good venue to go to uh, when we really can't go too many places uh, to, to look at the uh, really amazing display that, uh, that you, you and your brother and your friends have come up with. So great work. Thank you. All right, have a good night, Mr. Fiore. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You as well. Merry Christmas. All right, Mr. Hull, if you could take us through communications. Yes, uh, first under communications was a press release from uh, Governor Polito, uh, Gov Governor Baker and uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito announcing the uh, state rollback. Uh, Shelley mentioned it earlier, but uh, as you uh, note, um, 
outdoor gatherings have been limited to no more than uh, 50. Uh, hosts of outdoor gatherings uh, of more than 25 have to notify the Board of Health. Uh, capacities in uh, indoor settings have been reduced from 50% to 40%. Uh, restaurant patrons must wear masks at all times except when eating and drinking. Uh, and there's a number of other provisions that have been uh, put in place, but all in an effort to try to tamp down the, uh, the spread of COVID. Uh, next is uh, similar correspondence from the ABCC and in large measure, it really mirrors what uh, the governor and lieutenant governor have set out. Uh, this in, in particular deals with establishments uh, licensed to serve alcohol. Uh, next is a memo from uh, Shelley Newhouse uh, just announcing uh, the submission of uh, an agreement for uh, to be allowed to um, provide the COVID vaccines, serve as a COVID vaccine provider once the uh, vaccines are provided to the town of Wilmington. Uh, we have correspondence uh, from uh, James Cashwell <clears throat> and uh, others from the uh, Olin Corporation. Uh, this is directed to uh, EPA notifying them of a, um, a breach in the uh, plastic membrane that uh, is intended to uh, uh, service a uh, a cap for the uh, temporary cap at the Olin site. Uh, this was identified uh, recently on an inspection uh, and they have uh, been in touch with uh, EPA about uh, next steps and how they intend to uh, address that issue. Um, this is, um, as you see on the screen here, it's a fairly substantial uh, area and you can actually see in the picture areas where the uh, looks like a, a plastic, um, almost like a, what you would see as a plastic garbage type bag, but um, the material has been torn. Uh, we also have correspondence from our consultant, Geo Insight. So once we received notice of this, uh, we wanted to uh, make sure Geo Insight had an opportunity to comment. Uh, EPA provided a limited period of time for interested parties to offer comment on uh, the types of uh, remedies that uh, Olin should be looking at. Uh, and while uh, Geo Insight agreed with uh, some of the uh, recommendations that Olin is pursuing, they're suggesting a thicker, uh, more uh, durable liner, uh, 40 uh, milliliter to 60 milliliter. Uh, also the prospect of providing some measure of uh, soil cover so that when inspections are done, uh, it doesn't, uh, risk damaging the material uh, and the expectation is that there will be a more stringent schedule of inspections uh, on that um, a temporary cap. Uh, next under- Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, just, just a question on that uh, to, okay. to Mr. Hull. I, I don't know if you know Jeff, but has um, Jim DiLorenzo, uh, Lynn Jennings, uh, uh, from EPA, have they been informed of this breach? And uh, yes, are they going to be acting upon it? How do we how do we find out? Or what, what's what's the steps? Do they uh, because this is you know this is not good news, and certainly this didn't happen overnight. And it, it the, the full blame is on Olin and lands on their laps, and uh, shame on them for letting this get so deteriorated where, where it's tearing and ripping. And uh, so is EPA, uh, have we heard anything from them? Have we received any communications from Jennings and DiLorenzo on this? So the, uh, the first communication that uh, was from Olin's uh, consultant Wood uh, actually went to um, Melody Morash, who is uh, one of the representatives at Olin, at uh, EPA. Uh, so her uh, group, in, including uh, Lynn Jennings, were made aware of it. In fact, uh, about an hour and a half ago, just prior to the meeting, I did see a uh, email uh, response uh, to Olin, um, and I have not had an opportunity to review it in detail, but I gather just from my brief 
review it is uh, their response and the expectations they're going to have of Olin to um, both remedy the situation in the short term, but also longer term in terms of a more robust monitoring. Thank you. Uh, next under uh, correspondence uh, is an email from Selectman Joe Marie O'Mahoney. Uh, again, a further update on uh, the MBTA advisory board happenings and I'll turn it over to Selectman O'Mahoney. Sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Hull. This really isn't um, much of an update. We did have another meeting on December 4th that I was able to attend. I'll just read you briefly the email. Um, so I was able to attend the December 4th MBTA advisory board meeting and I'm attaching the minutes for it, from it in case any board members interested, as well as the report submitted by the advisory board to the MBTA, basically agreeing with the proposed changes that will be going into effect on Monday, uh, as of today, December 14th. I'm attaching the report for the board as it's, an interest, it's interesting to see the budgetary issues they've been facing and how these changes will potentially save $145 million. The impact to Wilmington residents are that the commuter rail will stop at 9 p.m. on weekdays and have no weekend service. There may be some changes and reductions in the scheduled times at non-peak hours. The subway system will also stop running at midnight in case any residents utilize that system. Residents are encouraged to go to the MBTA website to confirm their travel plans prior to using the system. Um, and that was the, the extent of it. The meeting on December 4th was really to review um, the recommendations um, that the MBT advisory board was making to the MBTA on their cha proposed changes. And, and in large part, it was to accept the proposed changes. There was a lot of discussion, again, from towns affected by the ferry service stopping completely uh, around, you know, how the busing would look for them, other ways that they could potentially try to save money. Um, and I think there was actually an article in the Boston Globe this Sunday, which is an interesting read that a lot of these change, a lot of people are wondering what the duration of these changes are. And, and the reality is, is the MBTA response at this point is we need to wait and see what happens post COVID um, because they believe commuting is going to change long-term now that people are working remotely and uh, people's work life has changed. Um, it might impact the MBTA more long-term. So it's, it's kind of an interesting time. Um, there's not going to be another MBTA advisory board meeting until the spring. There wasn't a definite date given, so I probably won't have any further updates, but for the changes that are implemented as of today, anyone who utilizes any MBTA service, whether it's the commuter rail or the subway, should go online and make sure that their schedule is not impacted or to look for alternatives if their schedule is. Next under uh, correspondence is um, communication from uh, Kelly Maggie Wright, who is the Executive Director of Minuteman Services. Uh, this is an annual uh, update from Minuteman Services, who is one of the uh, providers uh, for senior services in Wilmington. Uh, and she reports uh, that uh, for the fiscal year 2020, they provided service to 1,112 Wilmington residents. Uh, and breaks it down in terms of various categories of uh, care, including 185 case management and in-house care visits, 16 uh, caregiver support and counseling uh, sessions, 51 protective service cases, and 409 referrals to specific providers. Uh, and there's a further breakdown as well. Uh, next, we're into board to consider. Thank you, Mr. Hull. First board to consider item is the request of Christina Stewart, the library director, to use the Swain Green on Thursday, August 12th, 2021, with a rain date of Monday, August 16th, 2021, from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. for a 7 p.m. performance of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, and on Friday, August 13th, 2021, from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for the annual Summer Bash. So I have a motion. We'll move. Second. A motion by Mr. Bendel, seconded by Ms. O'Mahony. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel? Aye. Mr. Kyra? Yes. Mr. De Palma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahony? Yes. And I am a yes as well. It is unanimous. Item number seven on the agenda is, was the board to consider accepting the donation of map 40, parcel 13A, located at the corner of Main Street, Route 38, and Cross Street. We did take that up under appointments, and we did approve that request unanimously. The next is the uh, 
board to consider the approval of the 2021 licenses for alcoholic beverages, automatic amusement, billiard room, class one vehicle sales, class two vehicle sales, common victualler, and entertainment. Uh, so my hope for this is that we can take this up categorically rather than uh, one applicant at a time. Is there any objections to that approach? No objections. Thank you very, very much for that. So the first category we are going to take up is the All, All, All Alcohol Club. It is Fordham Associates Incorporated, DBA Aleppo Temple, 99 Fordham Road, and 4982 Building Association Incorporated, DBA Knights of Columbus, 112 Middlesex Avenue. The police chief has recommended approval with the uh, one caveat of being that at least as of the time that he had uh, submitted his recommendation, uh, Daniel Woods of the um, Knights of Columbus had not yet submitted a fingerprint for the uh, fingerprint based criminal background check. Uh, and I would recommend that we uh, look into set the all alcohol club licenses for both uh, the Aleppo Temple and the Knights of Columbus Blue. Uh, the understanding that the Knights of Columbus license will be held until uh, Mr. Woods uh, does submit to the fingerprint for uh, the fingerprint uh, based criminal background check. A motion. I'll make the motion. Second. Is there a motion by Ms. Almohony, seconded by Mr. Bendel. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. I take that as an aye. I think your audio just cut out a little bit. Mr. Kyra? Yes. Mr. De Palma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney? Yes. And I am a yes as well. It's unanimous. Next is the All Alcohol Package Store. Aviark LLC, DBA Colonial Park Liquors, 35 Lowell Street, Unit 9. 211 Lowell Street Corporation, DBA Eastgate Liquors, 211J Lowell Street. ShopRite Liquors Incorporated, DBA Elias Country Store, 381 Middlesex Avenue. Super Target Liquor of Massachusetts, DBA Target, 210 Valleyvale Street. NR Wilmington Incorporated, DBA Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirit, 258 Main Street. The police chief has recommended approval for all of these. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Second. We have a motion by Mr. DePalma, second by Ms. O'Mahoney. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel? Aye. Mr. Cairo? Yes. Mr. DePalma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney? Yes. And I am yes as well. That is unanimous. Next is the all alcohol restaurant. Uh, we have the restaurant of Boston LLC, DBA 99 restaurant pub number 3007599, 144 Mobile Street. Green Sauce Incorporated, DBA Casablanca Mexican Restaurant, 207 Main Street. ANC Stone Incorporated, DBA Golden Ginger Restaurant, 225 Main Street. Pacific Sunshine Incorporated, DBA Pacific Grove, 211E Lowell Street, AKA 217 Lowell Street. Ponchos Incorporated, DBA Ponchos Cantina, Unit 7, 206 Ballardville Street. BGP Tavern LLC, DBA Red Heat Tavern, 300 Lowell Street. CNC Restaurant Group LLC, DBA Rocco's Restaurant, 193 Main Street. LLM Incorporated, DBA Tremezzo, 2 Lowell Street. Police Chief has recommended approval of those. Do I have a motion? Motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Palmer, second by Ms. O'Mahoney. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel? Aye. Mr. Cairo? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney? Yes. And I am a yes as well. It is unanimous. Of note, Michael's place is not renewing. Uh, next is the automatic amusement license. Uh, we have one, it's K1 Speed Incorporated, 40 Rotem, uh, Fordham Road, 17 devices, 15 renew renewal. Two are new. We have a recommendation from the police chief, which is approval. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. O'Mahoney, second by Mr. DePalma. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel? Aye. Mr. Cairo? Yes. Mr. DePalma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Next is the billiards room license. We have one, it's K1 Speed Incorporated, 40, 40 Fordham Road, four tables. The police chief recommends approval for this. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion by Mr. DePalma, second by Ms. O'Mahoney. Do I have discussion? Are you none, Mr. Bendel? Aye. Mr. Cairo? Yes. Mr. DePalma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney? Yes. And I am yes as well. It is unanimous. The next is the class one vehicle uh, sales. We have Doobie Auto, Auto Group Incorporated, DBA Bill Doobie Hyundai, 271 Main Street, and Simono Automotive Incorporated, DBA Cornerstone Automotive and Cornerstone Mitsubishi. 580 Main Street. The police chief has recommended approval of these. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a motion by Mr. Bendel. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kyra. Do I have discussion? 
Lean on Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Cairo. Yes. Mr. Palmer. Yes. Ms. Mahoney. Yes. And I am a yes as well. That is unanimous. So next is the class two vehicle sales. So we have Bloomington Shell Incorporated DBA Advanced Auto Technologies, 779 Woburn Street. BNL Enterprises, 880 Main Street. DJ Auto Sales, 127 Main Street. Forest Auto Repair, 600 Main Street. Heavy Equipment Connection Incorporated, 239 Andover Street. Imperial Auto LLC, 845 Woburn Street, Suite B. J&E Services Corp, 619 Rear Main Street. Triple Nickel Auto Body and Repair LLC, 550, uh, 555 Main Street. NIA Incorporated DBA ZNS Gas and Service, 603 Main Street. The police chief has recommended approval for these. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. De Palma, seconded by Mr. De Palma. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Cairo. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahoney. Yes. And I am a yes as well. It is unanimous. The next is 42 uh, applications for common victualler license. Uh, for all of these, the Board of Health and the Building Inspector have recommended approval. We have 99 Restaurant of Boston, LLC, DBA, 99 Restaurant Pub, number 30075, 144 Lowell Street. We have Anjam Corporation, DBA, AJ's Kitchen, 162 Lowell Street. Fordham Associates Incorporated, DBA, Aleppo Temple, 99 Fordham Road. Sale, LLC, DBA, As Good As It Gets Cafe, 35 Lowell Street. Mastoran Corporation and LBK, LLC, DBA, Burger King, 280 Lowell Street. Green Sauce Incorporated, DBA Casablanca Restaurant, 207 Main Street. Hong Kai Incorporated, DBA China Walk, 329 Main Street. Chris Convenience Incorporated, DBA The Corner Store, 296 Shawshine Avenue, Suite 1. Country Chef Restaurant, 139 Main Street. Adam Do Adams Donuts Incorporated, DBA Duncan, 211 Lowell Street. EJQ Donuts LLC, DBA Duncan, 66S Concord Street. Hannon Donuts LLC, DBA Duncan, 357 Middlesex Avenue. Jane Reed Donuts LLC, DBA Duncan, 206 Ballard Vale Street. CNC Donuts Incorporated, DBA Duncan, 195 Main Street. Wilmington Donuts Incorporated, DBA Duncan, 321 Main Street. ANC Stone Incorporated, DBA Golden Ginger Restaurant, 225 Main Street. Heidi Burgers LLC, DBA The Habit Burger Grill, 196 Ballard Vale Street, Unit 1. Wilmington Heavenly Donuts LLC, DBA Heavenly Donuts, 579 Main Street. DDK Baking LLC, DBA Josie's Bakery, 2 Lowell Street, Unit 8. K1 Speed Incorporated, 40 Fordham Road. 4982 Building Association Incorporated, DBA Knights of Columbus, 112 Middlesex Avenue. Doodle Sack LLC, DBA La Rosa's, Unit 211, 269 Main Street. Song Hua Incorporated, DBA Lynn Garden, 35 Lowell Street. TH McCoy Restaurant Group LLC, DBA McDonald's Restaurant, 212 Main Street. Mona's Kitchen, 66 U Concord Street. Nick's Pizza, Roast Beef and Stubbs, 331 Main Street. Pacific Sunshine Incorporated, DBA Pacific Grove, 211E Lowell Street, AKA 217 Lowell Street. Pontos Incorporated, DBA Pontos Cantina, Unit 7, 206 Ballard Vale Street. The R Restaurants LLC, DBA Panera Bread, 228 Main Street. KQ Incorporated, DBA Peter's Pizza, Roast Beef and Seafood, 2 Lowell Street. Pizza Day, 206 Ballard Vale Street. BJP Tavern LLC, DBA Red Heat Tavern, 300 Lowell Street. St. Moses Incorporated, DBA Rizzo's Roast Beef and Pizza, 3 Hour Church Street, Units 1 and 2. CNC Restaurant Group Incorporated, DBA Rocco's Restaurant, 193 Main Street. Charlie's Two Corporation, DBA Samaritan Super Roast Beef, 279 Main Street. Starbucks Corporation, DBA Starbucks Coffee, number 11757, 253 Main Street. Watertown Enterprises, DBA Subway, 206 Ballard Vale Street, Unit 2. CDC Diner, DBA Sunnyside Cafe, 2 Jefferson Road. Target Corporation, 2, 210 Ballard Vale Street. LLM Incorporated, DBA Tremezzo, 2 Lowell Street. WF Pizza Company, LLC, DBA Tremezzo Pizzeria, 296 Chashin Street. Jalev Enterprises, LLC, DBA Wilmington House of Pizza, 325 Main Street. Of note, not renewing is Michael's Place on Lowell Street and Subway number 66331 uh, at 337 Main Street. Again, the Board of Health and the Building Inspector have recommended approval of all the aforementioned uh, common victual licenses. Do I have a motion? Motion. No motion. We have a motion by uh, Mr. DePalman, and we'll accept that as a second by Mr. Mahoney. Discussion. Very impressive timing there, Mr. Chairman. Did you practice that? Oh. How many Absol times did you Absolutely. I asked, I asked Ms. Dalton and Mr. Hull to send me this weeks in advance. I've been practicing this since probably Veterans Day. Well, and I would so, note, just yeah. for the record, that that was done in uh, two minutes and one second. Got to be a wreck. Oh. <laughs> yes, two seconds less, and you would have been under two. I see Chief Desmond is still on the line, so I'm sure I'm going to be getting a speeding ticket at some point soon. Yes. Seeing no further discussion of any substance whatsoever, we'll call for the vote. Mr. Bendel. In that case, aye. Mr. Cairo. Yes. Mr. De Palma. 
Yes. And Joe Mahoney. Yes. And I am a yes as well. You can't tell. I, I am one of the auctioneers at the Rotary Auction, and seeing as though, though there was no auction this year, I had to put that absolutely otherwise useless skill to use. The uh, last class of license on this item on the agenda is the entertainment license. We have Green Sauce LLC, or, I'm sorry, Green Sauce Incorporated, DBA Casablanca, 207 Main Street, Pacific Sunshine Incorporated, DBA Pacific Grove, 211E, Lowell Street, AKA 217 Lowell Street, BJP Tavern, LLC, DBA Red Heat Tavern, 300 Lowell Street, CNC Restaurant Group Incorporated, DBA Rocca's Restaurant, 193 Main Street, LLM Incorporated, DBA Tremezzo, 2 Lowell Street, Ponchos Incorporated, DBA Ponchos Cantina, 206 Palavale Street, Unit 7. Of note, Michael's Place is not renewing their entertainment license. For the other aforementioned uh, institution or uh, establishments, the police chief has recommended approval. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Bendel, seconded by Mr. De Palma. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Kyra? Yes. Mr. De Palma? Yes. Ms. O'Mahony? Yes. And I am a yes as well. That is unanimous. All right. So the next item on the agenda is item number nine. It's the board to consider executing the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission 200, I'm sorry, 2021 seasonal population increase estimation form. Uh, so that form is uh, in your packet and is estimating that there will be no seasonal uh, population increase, uh, which is consistent with prior years. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to accept. Motion by Mr. De Palma. Second it. Second by Ms. O'Mahony. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. Yes. Mr. Kyra. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony. Yes. And a yes as well, that is. Yeah. Last board to consider item is issuing a Sunday, enter Sunday entertainment license to K1 Speed Incorporated 40 photo mode. I have a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Bendel, seconded by Mr. De Palma. Discussion. Seeing none, Mr. Bendel. Aye. Mr. Kyra. Yes. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony. Yes. And I am yes as well. It is unanimous. Mr. O'Neill, we are on to public comments. Do we have any callers? Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just jump in before you go, go there? So with respect to these various documents, uh, uh, you can sign those on uh, the DocuSign, uh, I believe it, in the uh, document associated with the uh, deed will have to be signed in person. Thank you, Mr. Hall. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, we currently have no callers. All right, so I'll give it a minute or two. Uh, to make a public comment, please feel free to dial 1-646-558-8656. The meeting ID is 830-9659-7291. You will press pound and then press pound again at the next voice prompt. And then you will need to press star nine to raise your virtual hand. Everyone's sitting in traffic trying to look at the Christmas lights. You're missing out on this pretty authentic picture of Mr. Kyra. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? That's pretty good. You look Pay like no that. attention to Mr. Bendel, Mr. Bendel. Yeah, I try not to. <laughs> Definitely not photoshopped. Yeah, we need new still pictures there. Yes, we do. Mr. O'Neill, do you have anybody on the line? Mr. Chair, we do not. All right, I'm gonna call it at that point. Uh, I think we've waited at least a minute. Uh, we're on to announcements. We're gonna go a little bit out of order. Ms. O'Mahony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I have two announcements tonight. The first is I just wanted to thank uh, the community, the Knights of Columbus, um, the WOW Board and all the volunteers. We had our virtual Festival of Trees which was obviously very different for our 10th uh, Festival of Trees. We didn't expect to have to do it this way, but it was all online. The Knights of Columbus was very gracious in letting us kind of take over the hall to set it up for a week. And uh, it was very, very successful. Uh, we still had a lot of fun with it and we look forward to next year, hopefully when we're doing it in person again, as, as we should be. Um, the second statement I actually wrote, which you know I never do, but I wanted to make sure um, that I, I said it right. 
So I'm deeply disappointed that I need to make this statement. Recently, it's been brought to my attention that certain accusations have been made to our chairman regarding my residency or alleged lack thereof in Wilmington. These baseless rumors stem from certain individuals uncomfortably fixated interests in my personal life. I will respond twofold. First, my personal private life is no one's business. Be it on this board. Hold on, sorry. Be it on this board nor in the greater Wilmington community. It's a shameful aspect of our continuously emerging social media gossip culture that this accusation, accusation has even arisen. Anyone who had any questions, whether they sit on this board as my colleague or they live out in the broader scope of our town should have addressed them to me directly had they the courage to do so. Second, yes, I am currently going through a divorce. And yes, I currently have a boyfriend who owns a home in Tewksbury. I have never stopped being a resident of Wilmington for 17 years now. I have owned a home here. It is my residence. It is my primary and only residence. My voting address is in Wilmington and my children continue to be educated in our school system. As my divorce process continues on, I will remain a Wilmington resident as this is my home and I will continue to serve my home as a select person until the voters, not the anonymous texters, say otherwise. We need a town run by informed adults and I will not entertain a town affected by adolescent whisper campaigns. This will be my first and last statement of this nature in this forum. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Malley. Any other announcements? Mr. Bendel. Newman, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to uh, wish each one of you a uh, very Merry Christmas and to your families as well, Mr. Ho. To you and to uh, all of our town employees, Merry Christmas. Thank you all for what you do. To the residents of our town, Merry Christmas. Uh, and I also want to give a special thanks to the uh, Wilmington Police and Fire Department uh, and everybody else who was involved, DPW and many other private businesses for the uh, fire mentioned Santa Parade. It was incredible. They literally went all day long. It felt like they hit every street in this community. I think they were very well received. I know they were on my street. It seemed like everybody seemed to come out. From pictures I've seen, it looks like they came out on every road and it was really a great day for our kids and for our community. And as the chief mentioned, the amount of uh, donations that were collected was incredible. So a testament to our community. And again, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. Mr. Kyra? Yes, uh, I echo Mr. Bendel's uh, comments. The Santa Parade went driving by the house here and it, <clears throat> it looked like it had a, a ton of uh, cars and a lot of fun going on going by here. Uh, you could hear the, the sirens for, for, quite, for quite some uh, miles. Uh, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a, a happy and, and most importantly a healthy new year. Uh, hopefully uh, 2021 will be much different than 2020. Um, so Merry Christmas all. Thank you, Mr. Pat. Mr. De Palma. I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I want to say one thing right now. The town of Wilmington needs more people like Joe Maria O'Mahony. Trust me when I say this is an honest woman who I'm proud to call my friend and uh, associate. Uh, nothing like that should be said. I uh, Shame, shame, shame. And uh, again, Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year and enjoy. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Yeah, I, I, um, there's nothing that I can say that that's different from what my colleagues have said, but uh, this has been a, a trying year. Uh, and to specifically echo Mr. Kyra's point, I, I'm hopeful that 2021 is better than 2020, but uh, there's been an awful lot in 2020 that we have seen the best in people in Wilmington, whether it be the Santa Parade, uh, whether it be uh, the volunteers that um, not only we've had for different events that are either donating or trying to help out where they can, but the folks that we know are going to volunteer the second that we put out a call to, to um, health professionals to help out Shelly Newhouse and the health department. 
that we absolutely know that there are so many good people uh, in Wilmington that just want to help and help make our community better. So uh, I continue to think that this is really the best place to, to live and to raise a family. Um, I think in a, a difficult year, there is at least some comfort in knowing that this is really um, a wonderful community to be a part of. So I wish all of you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy New Year. I look forward to working with you uh, and seeing you all in a better 2021. Mr. Hall, if you had anything to add, feel free. I guess the only comment I would offer, and this was uh, something that was passed along to me from Pam McKenzie, who received, uh, it was a closing remark on a piece of correspondence, uh, and it said, stay positive, test negative. <laughs> um, but Merry Christmas, everyone, and uh, Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Mr. Hall. New business. All right, seeing none. Mr. Hall, can you walk us through important dates? Yes, uh, important dates. Tomorrow evening is the uh, Town Hall School Admin Building Committee. This is the first uh, meeting. Uh, proposals were submitted. Uh, I believe there are 15 in total, and the group will be meeting tomorrow night to uh, decide uh, on a, a selected group uh, to call for interviews. So that is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. virtual. Uh, December 24th, town office is closed. December 25th uh, is Christmas Day, town office is closed. Uh, December 31st, town offices are closed at noon. Uh, January 1 is uh, New Year's Day, town offices will be closed. Uh, then January 4th through the 15th, curbside collection of Christmas trees. Uh, January 11th is the next Board of Selectmen's meeting, virtual 7 p.m. Um, January 18th, Martin Luther King Day, town offices closed. Uh, meeting, uh, next meeting beyond that is January 25th, Board of Selectmen, virtual 7 p.m., the town manager's fiscal 22 budget presentation. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Last item on the agenda is our salute to service. Ken Cripps is a Navy veteran that proudly served aboard the USS Wadley. Ken is a longtime Wilmington resident and volunteered many years as a Wilmington Little League coach. Ken and his wife, Bev, were also very involved with local heroes for many years and assisted packing tens of thousands of care packages to send overseas to Wilmington's brave men and women serving in the military. And is also a Gold Star family member. His uncle, John A. Cripps, was killed in action on February 25, 1944 in Austria. Sergeant John Cripps was shot down while serving in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II. We'd like to salute Ken and thank him for his service to our country and to the Wilmington community. With that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Palmer, and I'm desperate for a second. I'll second. Second. <laughs> second by Mr. Cara. Mr. Bendel. <laughs> Mr. Bendel, is your audio on or are you audio leave? I'm still here, I think. I haven't been kicked out yet. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, Mr. Cara. Aye. Mr. De Palma. Yes. Ms. O'Mahony? Yes. And I am a yes. Good night. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Good next year.